Hello, my name is John. Thank you for joining me again. Today we are going to take a look at repeaters in Archimatics. Let's get right into Unity. We will create a scene like this. We have some towers connected together with some arched walls and a walkway with a parapet on top. So, let's get started. I will start a new scene. You notice I already have Archimatics imported into my Assets folder. If you don't remember how to import Archimatics into Unity, please see my first video in this playlist. I have the Archimatics Graph Editor docked on the right side of my screen. On the left side I have my scene view. And below next to my console I have the Archimatics library also docked. If you've already imported Archimatics into Unity, you will find the graph editor and the library under Window, Archimatics, Library, or Graph Editor. I recommend docking them as I did, as it doesn't obscure your scene view or any other windows. Let's start by creating a tower from the 3D library. Now we will connect the tower's output to a grid repeater node in the right hand side bar of the node menu. If you remember, this is done by clicking the output button next to the output mesh, releasing the mouse buttons so that you can move it around freely, scrolling down on the right side until you find the correct function node, in our case the grid repeater node, and clicking once on it. This creates a grid repeater node, and if you look into the scene view, a whole grid of towers was created. If you drag on the orange handles in the scene view, you will find that you can rescale the grid, increasing and decreasing the number of towers in it. Let's take a closer look at what's happening in the graph editor. We have our tower and we have the grid repeater node and it indicates it has inputs into the repeater u and repeater b function. We can click the, next, the arrows next to them to expand them or you can click show all nodes on the bottom left of your node view. This node is just the material for our tower. This node determines the repetition in the U direction and this one determines repetition in the V direction. Let's take a closer look at one of the repeater tools. I will choose the one that determines the repetition in the V direction. Under controls you will find size, bay, cells, actual bay and edge count. What do these mean? If you scroll on size, you will see that you're expanding the size in the V direction. If you scroll on bay, you will see that you're increasing the spacing or decreasing the spacing between the towers, but not changing the number of them. Actual bay shows you the actual distance between each tower. So what exactly does size and bay correspond to? If you select the grid repeater, you will see that the arrangement looks sort of like a spreadsheet with rows and columns. You can increase or decrease the columns by dragging the orange handles and same with the rows. Each cell in that grid is called a bay. If you look at the repeater tool node, you will see that the base size that we desire is 47.1 units but the actual base size is 44.01 units that's because the repeater tool tries to adjust for the closest number that allows us to be to the desired base size but when we drag the handles to increase and decrease the size it has to accommodate to an integer number of towers. 
And so the actual base size is not always going to be exactly the same as our desired base size. If I change my desired base size from 47.1 to something like 60, or maybe even more, 80, then you will see that the spacing between the towers has changed. Now if I drag my handles, the actual base size will try to conform to our desired base size, leaving a larger gap between the towers. If I put a much smaller amount for the base size in the U direction, for example 40, versus the V direction, which is 80, you will see that in one direction the towers are closer together than in the other direction. I want my towers to be equally spaced apart. So I will delete the repeater tool that feeds into repeater V and feed the same output from the first repeater tool into both repeater U and V. Now I can be guaranteed that the towers will be same distance apart in the U and the V direction. I'm going to scale my towers to down to only 4 because this castle will be a very small one just to show for example. Now I want to put walls with arched doorways between the towers. You can find the wall preset in your Archimatics 3D library or you can scroll down in the left side of your graph window and find it over there as well. Click on the node and connect it to the span U mesh and span V mesh of our grid repeater. You can see that the walls were created, but they don't fit properly yet. Let's adjust the size of the walls to make them fit properly to the towers. Maybe something like this. If you look at the walls from the top, you'll notice that they are not capped and it looks odd because they don't seem to have a surface at the top. There's a couple ways to fix this. You can go into the grouper node for the walls and finding the wall section expand the controls and turn on the sides. Now the sides of the extrusion are capped and we see bricks that are filling in the space at the top. We don't really need this because we are going to create special walkways at the top. So I'm going to uncap my extruded walls. Let's go back into the base model by clicking the breadcrumbs at the top and going back to the root, the AX model underscore one. Now we are going to create the walkway at the top of the walls. Start by creating a circle. Connect the circle to a grid repeater 2D. To make the circles match the number and the spacing of the towers, we are going to get the inputs of the original repeater tool into the repeater 2D for the circles. Our repeater tool for the towers is here, and if we expand the inputs for the repeater U and repeater V of the circle, we will see it has other repeaters connected to it. We don't need these repeaters, so simply delete them. And take the output of the repeater for the towers and plug it into the repeater U and repeater V for the circles. Now in the scene view, you should see that the circles are directly beneath the towers. I will increase the radius of my circle so that it's about the size of the base of the tower. And let's increase the segments as well. 
Now let's create a rectangle and make it match the size of the base of our castle. If you don't like to see the robot Kyle in the middle of your castle, you can unclick him at the bottom of your scene view. We are going to combine this square with our circles to create the foundation for the pathway or walkway. To do that, let's select both our rectangle or square as well as our grid repeater 2D and then click on the shape merger node in the top right corner of the graph view. This created a shape merger node but it's not exactly the shape that we want. Make sure the grid repeater 2D is filled in and we don't need the extra connection from the circle. So let's delete it. Okay now, we have a shape merger node which has two inputs. One of them is our square and the other one are the four circles for our tower. When we add them together, the resulting shape looks like this. To create the walkways between the towers, let's give the rectangle shape some thickness. To do that, expand the rectangle inputs and change the thickness. I think something like 2.5 is perfect. Now we have a 2D shape for the walkway. Let's create a 3D shape out of it. From the different output, let's drag and click on the Plan Sweep Plan function node. Nothing happened yet because the Plan Sweep Plan requires two inputs. A plan which we fed it and a section which it's missing. Now let's create a cross section that will be nice with the platforms. Scroll down either in the top left of your graph editor or choose the 2D section of your library to choose an interesting section. I will choose this one. Take the output and feed it into the section of the plan sweep. Now we can drag the object up to the level at the top of the walls. It looks like our walkway is missing the bottom section, so expand the controls of the plan sweep and make sure bottom cap is checked on. Now it's filled in. Use the handles or the parameter inputs to adjust the shape of your walkway to something that you like. We can give it a unique material, or we can give it the same material that is used by the tower. I will just take the output of the material for the tower and feed it into the input of the material for, for the walkway. That looks a little bit strange, so perhaps a different material might be better. Delete that connection and create a new material for the walkway. I will choose something like block wall. Now I will collapse my tools so that my graph editor looks less busy. We are still missing some battlements at the top of our walkway, so let's do that next. Find the shape that creates the outline of your walkway in the graph editor and take the output out to the plan repeater plan node. It looks like this. Nothing has happened in our scene view yet because the plan repeater plan node requires two inputs. We will give it a node mesh. Let's create a simple cube from the 3D menu. You can use the bar on the left side of your graph editor or you can use the 3D view 
and select the cube from there. Connect the output of the cube into the node mesh input of the plan repeater node. Now let's move the battlements up to the level of the pathway or walkway above them. I'm going to make my battlements a little bit taller and more narrow. By clicking on one, you can drag a handle to make it taller as well as more narrow. Now they're not positioned perfectly yet, but that's okay. To position them with the correct offset, expand the plan of the plan repeater node and change the offset to something that's more appropriate. Something like that. Also, let's expand the controls of the cube, uncheck bevels unified, and let's change the bevel for the top to something that will make the battlements a little bit rounded. The reason I uncheck bevels unified is because I don't want the bottom of the battlements to be beveled as well. Now we should give the beveled battlements a different material. You can feed an existing material or create a new one, I will choose block wall light. So this video was an introduction to repeaters. We use the grid repeater and the plan repeater to make our castle, but you're certainly welcome to try some of the other repeater functions on the right hand side of the graph editor. In the next video, we are going to take a look at group dynamics. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and see you next time.